Hey, what's up guys? This is Krishna here. Welcome to this exciting project walkthrough of Houdini Pendle Locks. Uh, it's also called Pendle Locks. Uh, these are the uh, crystals that hang from the chandelier. At least that's my <laughs> belief. Okay, right. Um, before I proceed, the project file is available on gumroad.com. Please support me by purchasing the file. I'd really appreciate it. And thank you all for showing me the support so far on YouTube and Gumroad. I uh, very much appreciate that too. Okay, thank you. So let's uh, jump right in here. So um, I've got a geometry container here, and then I've got two render containers, camera, and some lights. And I've also got a render node, and I have some materials, which we will talk about later. So everything really happens within this uh, geometry node here. Okay, what's happening here is that I've got, um, I think, three or four different things that are going on. Okay. So first is the variations, okay? Um, these are the crystals, really. And number two is the points that I want these variations to be copied to. And then the third thing is the strings themselves, okay? And then the fourth one, the chain node, which chains them together the way you see it here, okay? I submitted this for side effects daily challenge Mardini day three copy to points, therefore, I'm using the copy points node here. Okay, so um, let me go through one by one. Okay, so first of all, I've got four variations here. Okay, um, rubber toy, sphere, pig head, and squab, and they are going into the switch, and then they are being copied over to these points here, which is basically um, let me get rid of that template. Okay, so it's just a single point, and I'm replicating it into 32 points but if you notice they're all in the same location okay because the shape is set to zero okay if i increase this you can see it's growing bigger and i've got a a seed here which i have varied depending on the iteration number i'll, I'll explain that now so if i run through this so it's give me the iteration number from the detail of iteration two which is down here I mean, I could have used this one, but after I put the second one in, I used that one. Okay, just for change, I guess. You can change that and see how that works. But give me a random number of that iteration number. Okay, so the random number is normalized, which means it will always return a value between 0 and 1. So the seed will be any number between 0 and 1. Okay, so that's that. And then I'm giving a randomized p scale so every iteration or sorry every um, point has a different size and then different color again uh, that is randomized with this uh, same you know formula that I used here and I believe p scale would be the same too yeah there you go and orientation is exactly the same as well which rotates each point in a random direction and then if you look at the switch itself, switch also has a random detail, but this time I'm looking for iteration one, which is this one here, okay? And on top of that, I'm saying, you're giving me a number between zero and one. So I'm gonna fit that number from zero to one to zero to three, because I have zero, one, two, and three. So there are four variations in total, okay? So <clears throat> that's what that is. Okay, so I'm going to run through this now. Um, basically, it goes into the for each. Okay, and the for each is based on pieces. Okay, and um, you can see here, down here, you can see there are 32 points and 32 primitives. Okay, because I am packing them. Okay, not only that, if I now adjust this point replicate quantity, and watch here, if I change this to uh, 14. Down here you have 14 that means there are 14 packed elements here okay so that's what that is I'm gonna just put it back to 32 and then on on the right hand side here I have a string st set up okay so these are uh, these strings here okay so let me go through that now uh, so I've got a line in the um, negative z direction okay so as you can see and then i'm resampling that to give it a 32 segments okay so if i 
click on that you can you can see then I'm grouping them um, base zero would be pins okay so therefore when you copy the points the ones on the top will be pinned okay so that's what that is here I have a grid just a regular grid and then I'm remeshing that and attribute randomizing the p scale and then I'm copying these lines to the points that are on the grid so they're all like that with slight variations in length okay I'm uh, then giving it a constant color uh, I don't think it doesn't have any color anyway but uh, I'm giving it a constant color which is not really needed and then I'm feeding that into this for each here okay let me just disable that for the moment so what am I looking for I'm looking for pieces okay so for each primitive okay for each primitive okay so if I now single pass this you will have 32 points okay that's what it is for and if I were to just connect that there see it's a single primitive here okay so if I remove that so you got all of these primitives okay so let me connect this back on now so for each primitive chain the incoming geometry so when I do that what happens is we get this so if I were to say okay I'm gonna reduce this to two 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 again yeah this is what you'll get be, um, I think it, it's not working very well because it's remeshed here so if I enable, disable the remesh there you go you got four okay so I'm just gonna reset this back okay and I also want to show you another thing so let me drop a pig head here okay and let me draw curve and this one will go into the collision object here okay. so in projection would be geometry so okay so I'm gonna say right I'd like a necklace for this pig okay if I can draw it yeah I think that's enough so let me put a switch down here and I'm gonna connect that here and I'll switch it to the next one okay so it's just a basic curve okay I'm bringing in instead of these lines and guess what this will just work there you go okay so that's the idea behind it so there's the pig yeah you got yourself a jewelry I guess okay so um, I'm just gonna you know switch it to zero and uh, get rid of that and get rid of that as well okay good so we got that now all right and the reason why that is happening is because of the chain stop okay chain stop um, so here I'm using a repeat pattern of cycle you could just use random it'll give you a different result it doesn't matter um, I chose cycle and what I did was again the same thing I uh, set the offset to be um, the detail iteration of iteration number two and give me a randomized number of that iteration and then fit that value between 0 and 20 okay so offset will be from 0 to 20 okay um, you don't need to do this and you can just possibly copy just this part here and put it in random if you like okay um, it's up to you I'm gonna leave it at cycle okay good and then we also have this base rotation okay so if I disable that see the rotation is slightly different okay um, there you go and also if I remove this orient here okay you'll see that it all facing the same direction okay that's not very good or at least it doesn't look cool okay good all right and it's the same with the p-scale but I don't want to take out p-scale okay uh, maybe I'll change the size to show you there you go it's gotten bigger okay put it back okay good in the chain shop itself um, I do have other options okay so if I go into alignment so uh, this piece spa spacing so if I increase that you can see it's okay that's no good I think it was zero 
0.1. So if I put in 0.1, it increases and minus 0.1. Yeah, so it just comes close together. But I suppose I can put in 0 0.02. Yeah, it kind of tightens up a little bit. So maybe there. Now you can see. So you, you can tighten up uh, the space between each point. Ah, messed it up. Okay, I'll get rid of that. And then the piece of rotation can be changed as well. Here, there you go, like that. And then you got your curve, up control, up direction, forward direction. You can play around with these, uh, you can change them, okay? Uh, there's also one more thing, is um, this fraction of geo length, okay? If I were to reduce this, it'll just pull it in, okay? Just like um, this piece spacing, except this one, it actually um, changes the transformation of the actual piece themselves, all right? So for example, if I put in two, see how it just, you know, completely transforms the actual mesh itself. Hey, that's my, maybe some things, uh, maybe that's what you want, maybe, <laughs> I, mean, no, I don't know. Definitely not zero, okay? Uh, and then this curve view position is very cool. So, um, I should have had that um, curve to show you. Okay, so let me just create that again. Okay, so you got the curve now. Okay, so what does this do? The curve you position will move it along. Okay, so like that. So it's pretty cool. And then you have the end behavior. If you, uh, let's say, clip it, it'll just disappear. Okay, if you clamp it, I think it'll all just stagger together at the end there you go right there um, I extend is that okay so that's your curve view position I've already explained the offset okay I'm just gonna put this back to this so what's happening now is that I'm creating vellum here okay uh, I believe these are all default just except for the pin points I'm using pins okay which we generated earlier um, I believe it's here yeah there and there are these settings you know you could change these settings and try them out yourself okay and then i'm feeding that into vellum solver basic stuff i just push the ground position down uh, by negative two and then giving it a sub step of five and if i run this now you'll see it'll just be doing that and I believe that is because there is a force inside. Yeah, there is a pop wind I put in here. Okay, so it just moves it around a little bit, like it's kind of windy or whatever, you know. So, like that. Okay, good. So I'm using point deform after that because what I'm getting here, I don't want to um, do this for each after the sun, but I want to do it for just one frame and then. Um, use the current point position after simulation to match it okay so that's what I'm doing here okay so I've already kind of cached it so I'm gonna use that um, and here you go so there it is okay so it's moving beautifully but remember um, mesh deformations will not occur with this because uh, it's all packed okay next uh, on this side I'm I've got a post process okay um, and then color it again to white just killing the color of the actual strings okay in here i have a camera clipping so for example this camera is um is what i'm using the clipping for okay so if you notice anything beyond that is gone for example here you have a lot more stuff if i disable that it's all gone i just want to save a uh, resource and memory so that um, during render times it's easier for it to load okay so that is how am i doing that so uh, this uh, particular trick i learned from stephen living by the way his tutorials are awesome check them out they'll be worth it okay so texture type is perspective from camera and this is the camera one attribute class is point and that's the only cam i got anyway and then i'm creating a point wrangle to say that um kill x um, kill in the X direction and then kill in the Y direction and then uh, if uh, the UV is less than zero 
minus a particular uh, value or x is higher than 1 plus a particular value okay it's the same for y okay so i've given the values here so if i change the padding for example uh, you can't see that for that one ah what happened there so now if you see here if i now increase this value for example you can see it's starting up here okay so that's what it is and if i reduce this y pad you'll see some of these disappear as well okay so that's what that is and that's because i've got a blast of kill equals one okay because i've said kill equals kill x or kill y there's a space okay good so that's that now we'll move on to the render okay so it's just bringing that in geo out and then uh, just a basic material and then render strings is the same but this time I'm using polywire uh, sometimes I actually choose to render by using uh, strands but strands are a thin strip of material a thin strip of geometry I didn't want that okay um, I wanted sort of a cylindrical shape so I created polywire instead with a very very thin wire radius and then assign it to the strings material okay. and let's just jump into the material now so geometry I'm bringing in the um, color attribute which we got here okay. from this one here so if I click on here you got a CD okay so I'm bringing that in and I'm feeding it into the material jade which is a subsurface scattering material feeding it into the fuse color and MS color zero which I believe is um, this one down here ah, where is it yeah this one this one with the radius of one and radius of two and weight of one okay so that's what that is and then oh no it crashed okay we're back again so we're gonna have a look at the uh, strings okay I don't know what happened there but uh, it all disappeared so the strings are just gold uh, no big deal I just selected one of the presets here okay so it's just gold as far as the out is concerned um, which is the uh, render wrap uh, these are typical stuff but I do have motion blur enabled and denoising enabled okay so for motion blur to work you need to ensure that uh, you've got sampling enabled here and and under redshift enable these okay and it's the same for this I believe yep there you go and render as well velocity blur okay uh, so the camera camera is uh, 1080p and I have enabled depth of field okay sampling at this here radial bouquet uh, that's the current position of the camera and there are two lights first one is uh, just a normal area light with 200 intensity and the second one is a dome light which is um, the seller HDR I got from polyhaven.com and I will leave a link in the description for you for that and that is free 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 to download okay so that's the uh, let me just play this for y'all okay I uh, simulated about 120 frames okay let's have a look at it that looks uh, pretty cool I think and there's the render and I love how um, I can see the reflections in this sphere here and um, I think uh, the HDRI worked out pretty well as well <clears throat> so it looks pretty cool so I hope you learned something from it and I hope you like it and if you did please give me a like comment share subscribe I really appreciate that thank you have a good day now